Hi, this is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to talk about how to short the stock market. If you're interested in learning advanced trading techniques, if you're worried about a bear market, or if you just want to see how I'm trading this bear market, be sure to hit that subscribe button now. And before I start, there's a mandatory government uh, warning that I need to put up. Basically, I'm going to teach you a little bit about futures trading in addition to some other techniques. Futures trading has large potential rewards. It's definitely advanced, um, and it's an it's advanced uh, asset class, and you have to be very careful because they do use leverage. So make sure you read this entire warning. So let's jump, let's jump right into it. Uh, very quick review, S&P 500 is the 500 biggest, probably most important com uh, companies in the world. It includes stuff like McDonald's, Apple, Starbucks, etc. It's a very good measurement for what the stock market is doing, and in particular what the stock market is doing in the U.S. There's an ETF for the S&P 500 called SPY. This trades just like a stock, and it basically tracks the S&P 500, which itself is a basket of 500 stocks. Now, when we buy stocks, when we go long, which is the normal way people trade stocks or invest in stocks, we basically are told by people like Warren Buffett uh, and others that you want to buy low and sell high. That's how, so you basically buy down here and you sell up here. Now, short selling is a little bit different. Short selling, basically, you first sell and then you buy. And it's really the inverse of uh, going long. Whereas if you are buying the stock, you want to buy low and sell high. When you're shorting a stock, you want to sell high and buy low. And the basic, what's basically involved is you borrow the shares from your broker. We'll go into this. You sell them in the open market and then you buy them back once the stock has fallen. If the stock or index goes up when you're short, you will lose money. So let me first tell you, I've been getting a ton of emails about this. Let me sure, first show you two very bad ways to short the stock market, two very difficult ways. And these are ways that a lot of retail traders I, I see are using. The first one is what are called leveraged ETFs. And these are uh, exchange traded funds like SPY, but they basically allow you to bet that the stock market is going to go down or up. And it usually allows you to uh, do some leveraged version of that. So you can see here, you can you can do 2x returns, 3x returns, negative returns, etc. So for example, the one that I see a lot of people using is the, um, this is based on the QQQ, which is the NASDAQ 100, all the FANG stocks you know, lots of big large cap tech stocks in addition to some other stocks, maybe some bio cap, biotech stocks. The QQQ uh, is a good proxy for tech. It's also shares a lot of the same companies with the SPY. But I see a lot of people trading the SQQQ. This is a leveraged ETF that basically gives you 3x the returns of the NASDAQ 100, of the QQQ. So if the NASDAQ, um, and this is the, re the reverse version of it. And so basically if the NASDAQ goes, um, goes uh, down 1%. Well, let's just look at a chart quickly of SQQ, SQQQ. Now you can see it basically will go up in a leveraged way when the market is going down. Now the problem is it doesn't, it doesn't track exactly. So I, I believe you should avoid uh, these leverage ETFs if your holding period is more than one day. So it will track the QQQ, the inverse of the QQQ, well over one day. But because of some weird compounding effects that I'm not going to go into, if you want to be short the market for a series of days, really for more than one day, you should not touch these. They're really only for intraday trading. Now, they're also very dangerous. The SQQQ, as we said, gives you 3x the inverse returns. So if the NASDAQ so for example, the QQQ on Friday was up 8.5%. And when this happens, the Q SQQQ will lose money. It will you lose approximately three times the opposite. So it's basically a short product. And if the uh, index, the QQQ itself is up 8.47%, we would expect the SQQQ to lose about 3% of that. So I mean, three times that. Now you can see that even, even on Friday, it didn't track it exactly. It actually lost 28%. So this is a very dangerous product. 
if you put a lot of money in this, imagine having you know almost a third of your capital just liquidated overnight. So I don't, uh, these are okay for day trading, but they're very dangerous instruments. And if you're gonna hold them for multiple days, they will actually not track uh, the market. So we can see how the QQQ here has fallen off a cliff. See how it's gone straight down really since the high on February 19th. If we could look at the SQQQ, it's gone from about 15 to, well, it moved. It moves around a lot. It got as high as 32.50, but you can see that it bounces because of compounding effects. It is not does not track well. So I would say to avoid these. If you want to short the uh, the QQQ and not use futures, basically you can use um, you can you can short the QQQ or the SPY S and P 500. And basically, what you the the command you'll use in your brokerage account is sell short. So basically, it'll be just like any other any other uh, order. You'll say, you know, I want to sell short SPY at we'll just use Friday's closing price, which is we'll just say about 270. And so what this will do is it will allow you to sell or short the um, the the S and P 500. You could also do the QQQ at this price or higher if you use a limit order. And you should you should probably always use a limit order, especially in fast moving markets. And then if the stock market falls, if the Q, if the SPY falls, uh, for example, let's say we do 100 shares of this at 270. So let's see, 100 times 270 is, uh, uh, sorry, I'm a little slow this morning, $27,000. And if the stock market falls, if the SPY falls to 260, that's basically 10 points. And so we'll make 10 points on 100 shares, so you'd make $1,000. And basically what happens is if the SPY falls to 260, you will basically, you will either use the order buy, you'll buy 100 shares, or you'll do buy to cover. It depends on your broker. Usually it just says, says buy. And so that's the way, basically to enter this trade, you sell short, and then to exit it, you buy or buy to cover. Now, if the stock market goes up 10 points, uh, if it goes from 270 to 280, in this case, you would lose $1,000, basically 10 points times 100 shares. So you can size this, you know, you can just do one of these, one share or a, a fraction, a, a possibly even a fractional share. I'm not sure if Robinhood allows shorting yet. Uh, I don't think it does, but it, it may. So if you are going to, if you're going to trade ETFs, stay away from the leverage ETFs. And just uh, just use the SPY or the QQQ to go short. Again, none of this investment advice. Shorting is a very advanced technique. Now, the other question I've been getting is people are saying, should I buy puts on the stock market? Now, the problem with puts are basically a form of insurance, and they pay, they pay you if a stock goes down. But they are a function. They are priced using something called implied volatility or there's an implied volatility piece associated with their price. And when the VIX is high, and you can see that it's very, very high at the moment, anywhere between 60 and 80, when the VIX is high, it means options are very expensive. It means implied volatility is high and option prices are high. And buying puts in this kind of environment, as I've said in other places, is a little bit like buying flood insurance when your basement is already beginning to fill up with water. You might not even be able to get it, but if you get it, it's gonna be very expensive because your house is essentially in the process of flooding. So if we look at option prices, I just went to Yahoo Finance. I clicked on the options tab here. I typed in SPY, and I'm gonna look at the put options. We'll scroll all the way down here to puts. Let's see. So it's currently at two, what did we say, 270. And so if we wanna buy basically at the money puts, they will cost us roughly, I think this is the last price here, 1931. And so in order to make money on this, the SPY is currently at 270. If the put options cost us $19, your break-even price will basically be uh, 270 minus 19. And so that's uh, what is it, 250. Sorry, this thing is not working for some reason. Two, um, 251 will be your break-even price.
I don't know why it's not letting me draw. Uh, but the problem is you basically, if you're short, if you're buying puts at 270, it has to move by the amount of the premium you pay. And as a result, because uh, implied volatility is so high, it's very hard to make money buying puts at this stage. The time to buy puts was about uh, four weeks ago. So where, where are we so far? So far we say we avoid buying puts unless you really know what you're doing and understand options pricing. We avoid levered ETFs. If you want to trade ETFs, you can short the QQQ for the NASDAQ, the SPY for the um, S&P 500, the DIA for the Dow, Dow Jones uh, 30, most common, commonly known index, and uh, the Russell 2000, the IWM would be the, the ETF for that, for the small caps. And you can see small caps have gotten hurt much, much worse than any other, um, any other index. Now, my favorite way of shorting the stock market, and the cleanest way of doing it, is not using the ETFs, not using options, and not using leverage ETFs, but using the futures. Again, this is advanced. You can really hurt yourself with the futures if you don't know what you're doing. But I've been getting a lot of questions about how exactly they work. So the first thing you can do is you can just go to Google and type in ES E-mini futures. And um, then just click on uh, CME group. I'll put links to everything uh, in, the, in the section below. So these are, these are basically the futures. Um, these trade electronically on Globex, they trade on a futures exchange. If we click on settlements, we can see where they traded on Friday, where they closed on Friday. And um, so basically, we ha you'll see when you trade futures, they're different months. There's March, June, September, and December for stock index futures. We always want to be trading the month that has the highest open interest. You can see right now that the March uh, futures, the March 2020 futures, which expire uh, essentially the, the third Friday of March. So they will be expiring in a while, in, a, in just a couple weeks, and at that point, everyone will be trading the June futures. So if you're gonna trade these, you wanna trade the ones that have the highest open interest and usually the highest volume as well. Now you can see, that they they settled the closing price or the settlement price of the March 2020 E-mini futures was 26.96 on Friday. Now let's see where the if you want to see where the index closed itself, SPY is the ETF, SPX is the index. You can see the index closed at 27.11 versus uh, 26.96. Now there's going to be the futures prices will not always be at the same number as the underlying cash index or the S&P 500, simply because of things that have to do with interest rates and the index dividend yield. We don't really have to worry about that. This is a fairly simple product. It's, it's hard to trade, but it's fairly simple to understand. So let's, let's just talk about this. Closed at 26.96. Now each point on these futures, and we're looking again at the E-mini S&P 500 futures, each point is worth $50. So if I go long these futures and the market moves to 26.97, which obviously would be a tiny move. We've been getting um, hundreds of points moved. Uh, but if it went from 26.96 to 26.97 and I was long the futures, I would make $50. If I was short the futures, I would lose $50. Now, if I'm short the futures at 26.96, so I sell them short, and the stock market falls, the S&P 500 falls one point. Now these will again track, they will, they will track the S&P 500 cash index. 26.95, so let's say the, the, the futures fall one point, and I'm short, I will make one point times $50. Now how do I know that one point is equal to $50? Well, there's an easy way of doing it. You just click on contract specs here. And it tells you that the, the, the uh, if you look over here where it says contract unit, the value of the whole contract is equal to the value of the S&P 500 index, or basically where the futures are trading, times $50 a point. So let's go back and, and, and think of how much we are controlling here uh, if we buy one futures contract or short one futures contract. We'll basically look at the settlement price. We'll look at Friday, Friday the 13th, probably appropriately. 
We'll look at the settlement price, 2696, as we said. So 2696 times $50, because each point is worth $50. That will give you the, what's called the notional value of the futures contract. So 2696 times 50 is $134,000. 134800 if I've done my math right. So just one futures contract here is worth, has a notional value of 134, call it $135,000. So these are these are fairly big contracts, and and one way to think about this is if if the S and P moves one percent, so you get a one percent move in the S and P five hundred either up or down, the value of your contract will change by one percent times one hundred thirty four thousand. So you'll basically per futures contract you'll make one thousand three hundred and forty eight. I'm just taking one percent of the notional value. So that's another way to think about it. I find that a lot of new traders, the easiest way for them to think about it is just uh, is just in terms of point value. So if this moves one point, you make fifty dollars. And again, if you're long or short, it's it's always going to be fifty dollars. You'll be making or losing. Now we said that this these these futures contracts have a notional value of what did we say one hundred thirty four thousand eight hundred. So that's how much. Of the stock index you are basically controlling by buying or selling one of these but the interesting thing is with futures and what makes them quite useful is you don't have to put up one hundred thirty four thousand dollars one hundred thirty five thousand dollars in your trading account in order to trade these in fact all you need to put up is what's called the initial margin so if we go into schwab click on street smart central this is one of my futures trading accounts and then we enter esh20 Okay, I've got to back up and <laughs> tell you something more about more about this. So, let's see here. So, the the ticker for the S and P E mini futures. If we go to contract specs again, and let's see if we scroll down, you'll see that what they call the ticker or the product code is E S. So that's the basic underlying type of futures. Then, as we saw, there are different months. There's March, June, uh, September, and December. And each of those months has a, a, a letter associated with it, H-M-U-Z. So H is equal to March, M is equal to June. I'm just writing the numbers of the months here. U is equal to September, which I guess is nine, and Z is equal to December. And as we saw, as we saw the front month, what they call the front month is currently, and the one you'd be trading is the March 2020 uh, S&P E-mini futures. And so the ticker for these is the, the underlying ticker, ES, the month, with it, which is March. And then depending on your broker, they'll, you, they'll usually just say 20, or they might say they might say two, or they might say 2020. Let's go back and see what Street Smart Central calls it. Yeah, they call it ESH20. So that pulls up this contract that we're interested in. And if we scroll down here, we can see contract size, uh, fifty dollars a point. Contract months, HMUZ, as we said. Uh, trading hours, etc. One thing that's interesting about this, which I did not mention, is that if you look at this over the weekend, you always wonder. People always wonder how people know the stock market's going to open up big or down big on Monday. On Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening, you can go here just to quotes. You can see it's Globex. These haven't started trading yet. They'll start trading uh, later this afternoon, Sunday afternoon, but you can actually see the stock market moving before it opens. And so these are actually tradable. You can trade them starting uh, Sunday afternoon or Sunday night, depending depending where you live. So if we go back to Street Smart Central here, as we said, one of these contracts is equal to $50 times the value of the futures. And so they're equal to each of these controls, as we said, about $135,000 worth of the S&P 500 index. But you only need to put up a, a limited amount of margin for that, what's called initial margin. So in order to buy or sell one of these futures contracts, uh, we only need to put up, according to Street Smart Central, and each broker sets their own uh, margin requirements so they're usually roughly the same. Initial margin is 9,185. And if I put that much money in my futures account, I will be able to buy 
or sell, buy or go short one S&P futures contract. Now, that's called the initial margin. That's what you need to enter the trade. Now, if the trade moves against you and you start losing money, so let's say we do one futures contract and um, let's see, we're up uh, 91.85 is the initial margin. What's called the maintenance margin is 83.50, 8,350. That's $835. Divide by $50 a point. So it's about 16, I don't know why it's not letting me write on this. It's about 16.7 points. So if the S&P 500, if the futures move, 16.7 points times $50, that will be equal to, uh, what do we say, $835. And so let's say we, we go short the futures, the, uh, the market rallies against us 16.70 points, we lose $835. And in that case, our initial margin of 991.85 subtract $835, so we're losing money, and we end up with $8,350. If your account value drops to $8,350, the broker will make you deposit another $835 in order to bring your maintenance margin back up to your initial margin to, to make sure you have 91.85 again in your account. Now this is because futures are a zero sum game. Whenever one account that is long is making $50, another account that is short is losing $50. And it's basically a wealth transfer from the winners to the losers. It's a zero sum game. Uh, not taking into account commissions, which are which are fairly low. I like to use Schwab, Street, Street Smart Central, Interactive Brokers, TradeStation. Um, those are probably my, my three favorite futures uh, brokerage accounts. And again, this is an advanced strategy. So how do we short the stock market using futures? Well, we basically sell, we, we wanna sell, and it's not even called selling short. You sell one, March S&P E mini 2020 futures and you will make money then if the futures go down you'll lose money if the futures go up and when you're ready to exit your trade either at a profit or a loss you're going to want to buy one of these contracts and that will offset your sell so there's not really a sell short or a buy if I am uh, if I'm short one contract of the S&P uh, S&P E-mini, the March 2020 futures. If I'm short one contract, in other words, I've sold one contract, if I buy one contract, that will get me flat. In other words, I will be neutral then. I won't be exposed to any market movements. It will sort of zero it out. If I buy two contracts, one of those contracts will cancel out my short, and the other contract will get me long. So it's very easy to flip long and short. This is why the futures are great trading um, a great trading uh, medium simply because it's very easy to go from being long to being short. If I'm long one futures contract, just trying to find a place to uh, to write here. If I'm long one of these, so I'm long one uh, one e mini, and I want to get short, all I do is I sell two contracts. One of them will get me out of my long, and the other one will get me short. Now because these are leveraged. I like to have a lot more money in my account than just this $9,185. Now, how much should you have in your account? Well, let's say we're looking at the SPX index here. And uh, these numbers aren't going to, again, they're going to be off by a couple of points from the S&P futures. But they will still, the S&P futures will still track this cash index exactly. So let's say I want to go short at $2,700. And I think I'm looking at this chart here, 2700. I want to go short tomorrow. Not saying that's necessarily a good idea. This is just an example. I want to go short at 2700. And I think, you know, maybe the market could go against me up to 2800. If it goes above 2800, I'm clearly wrong. And maybe we're in a bull market and I shouldn't be short. So it's going to go 100. I, I, I have to have room for it to go 100 points against me. Okay from 2,700 to 2,800. I'm willing to endure that sort of drawdown. So that's 100 points times $50 a point. And that, so that is uh, what, $5,000? 
So I'm willing to have a drawdown of $5,000 if it goes against me. But basically, if I go short here and it, it rallies up here, and then maybe it'll you know, crash right back down and I'll be fine. So I wanna have a little wiggle room. So I wanna have $5,000 in there of wiggle room. And then I'm also gonna need money in there for that initial margin, 91.85. Uh, where did I put it? Sorry. Oh, I guess I was over here. So wiggle room of $5,000, margin of 91.85, initial margin. And so if I just add those two, uh, $5,000 plus 91.85, I will need to have uh, $14,000, 14185 in my account to trade one futures contract. Now, this is a fairly big product for new traders. And I know a lot of you have accounts that are much smaller than this. Fortunately, they're different products. They're smaller products. So let's just quickly, um, before I do that, let's quickly talk about, so the equivalent of the S&P, the, the S&P E-mini for the NASDAQ is the E-mini NASDAQ. Now the ticker for this is, is uh, NQ. I'll put links to all of this, it's NQ. And you can see it trades the same way as um, the same months as the S&P E-mini. E -mini. There's basically a, uh, there's March, June, September, December. And again, this is trading in the March contract still. So if you wanted to trade this, if you wanted to trade, this is equivalent to trading the QQQs, right? You'd use the ticker NQH20. So rather than trading the S&P 500, this will allow you to, to, to go long or short the NASDAQ 100. Now, if you have a smaller account trading size, uh, either you shouldn't be trading futures uh, because they, they definitely are advanced. You can make a lot of money with them very quickly. You can lose a lot of money with them very quickly because of the leverage. But if you have a smaller account and you're willing to take on this risk, you can take a look at, if you just Google micro e-mini equity futures, these are a smaller versions of the same thing. So we have the micro e-mini S&P 500, the micro e-mini NASDAQ 100, same for the Russell and the uh, Dow Jones. So if we click here on the e micro e-mini S&P 500 index, we can see that the contract, and then we, we click on contract specs, we can see that rather than being $50 per point move in the S&P 500 index, like the ES was, this is just $5 per point. And as a result, it is, uh, um, it's a much smaller, it's a smaller account. I mean, it's a smaller contract. You don't have to post as, as much margin. So the, the margin is probably gonna be roughly one-tenth the size. So rather than the initial margin being, what did we say, 9,185, it's probably gonna be closer to $918. And then if the S&P 500, if it goes from, uh, if it goes from, if you're shorted at 2,700, and it goes to, uh, call it 26.99, and you're short, you're gonna make one point, and then the multiplier is this $5. And so you'll make, uh, you'll make $5 per point. If it goes against you, if it goes from 2700 to 2701, you will lose $5. So this is a much more manageable futures account size. And again, you can go in and take a look at the NASDAQ, the micro e-mini here as well. Uh, I believe that it is, uh, what is this one? Oh, it's just $2, $2 per point. So these are these are probably more manageable uh, futures contracts to trade. So hopefully, uh, I know this has been a kind of complicated video. Hopefully that all makes sense. Please ask your questions in the um, comments below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Hit the like button if you found this helpful. And also check out, if you're interested in more bear market trading strategies, uh, if you're watching this video right when it came out, this book is actually free today and tomorrow. So be sure to pick up your free uh, free Kindle copy and you can get also get the paperback for just $6.99. And this has a lot of more advanced strategies that you can use to trade this bear market. Again, let me know your comments in the comment section below and uh, stay safe out there. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.